How's it going my friends? Back with another video today. And as promised, I'm gonna do a full video on the updates, firmware three for the Nikon Z6 and Z7. But as you guys know, I run Z6s, so Z7s aren't really about this channel. But like I said, I wanted to do a whole full in-depth of just what they changed, the improvements, and exactly what Nikon did with this firmware three update. So first off, I just wanna let you guys know I bought an Atomos, Atomos Ninja 5 for this. And um, I just wanna say thank you to my patrons and people who have sent, sent donations and everything. I use that money for the Atomos. You know, those don donations that I use, it really goes towards different things that I can you know, help to improve this channel. So thank you guys so much. So the firmware three update, what did Nikon actually add? This is a huge update. They added, yes, animal eye autofocus face detect. They added improvements in AFC and face tracking, the actual hit rate improvements, and they've tweaked the autofocus systems to actually track way better, way higher hit rate. Um, also, CF Express, different brands they added support for. And finally, they added this 3D tracking-like feature. Okay, now this, the white box that I'm gonna show you guys, it was there before, but they've tweaked it, the algorithm or the way that they use it to actually work more like a 3D tracking. And they've allowed you to map that box to the FN1 buttons, which creates a workflow that's like no other, which I'm gonna show you guys through the Atomos and actually how I use it. But a few of my preliminary thoughts. This is more than we could have asked from Nikon, in my opinion. I think that they are, like I said in my last video, they're super serious about the Z cameras. Uh, just from the amount of firmware updates that we've had and the actual quality of the firmware updates, uh, we haven't really had to wait that long. I mean, it's only been a year and a half, guys, and we, we ba they've basically transformed the camera. So they're working on it, and they've given us a huge update here that I'm very, very happy with. The hit rate on... AFC is much, much better. It's not just the fact that the, that the face tracking actually sticks to the face and the eye better, which it does, but the actual hit rate, when you go back and review the photos, there are way many more in focus than there were previous versions of the firmware. One thing that I noticed is it tracks much better when subjects are coming towards you or going away from you, which is one of the hardest things, everybody knows that, one of the hardest things for cameras to track with autofocus is people coming at you or forward very, very fast. The hit rate has greatly improved with that. So another thing too, is when I show you guys the technique that I'm gonna be using now with the autofocus, I want you guys to understand, and most people know this, you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I preach technique practice. Cameras are tools and they've gotten so good to a point now that honestly, if you're not getting sharp photos or if your photos aren't good enough, it's your fault. You have to take responsibility for that. It's not the camera's fault at this point. And this goes for not only Nikon, but every other brand. They're all so good that really, if you're not getting what you want out of the camera, you need to work on your technique. So these things should be work. You should have to get better at them and hone your skills. You should not just want to turn on the camera and have it do everything for you. You should want to get good at it. You should want to learn it. You should want it to be a tool that you intimately know. And so you can basically learn the rules and how it works so you can push the boundaries and break them and create new things. Uh, and you know, honestly, anything that comes too easy, guys, isn't really worth a shit. You want to make sure that you're actually learning things and taking it um, taking a, a deep dive into the gear that you have and knowing it like the back of your hand. So uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna jump you guys over to the Atomos. I'm gonna show you how to map the buttons, how I do, or how I did it. And then I'm gonna show you a technique that I use with the 3D tracking and the face tracking mode. And then also I'm gonna show you how I track Sarah and my stepdaughter and everything. And we're just gonna kinda, I'm gonna show you exactly how it works and how much better it is. But if you guys have any other, I, the only other thing I want to say is I don't have any animals, so I don't, you know, I, don't, I didn't test the face tracking for the animals, the animal IAF. It's not a huge, I mean, I'm glad that Nikon did it. For me personally, I'm not going to use it because I don't really shoot animals. Uh, but if you guys, I know that there's some people on the channel that are interested in that. So if you guys have tracked it on animals, please let the other people in the comments know. Just a helpful thing to let everybody know kind of how it works. So let's jump over here. I'm going to show you how to map the buttons and then we're going to go through the print the test and I can actually show you how it works. 
All right, my friends. So basically what I want to start off with is show you how to map the subject tracking uh, the same way I do with my function buttons. So basically what you're going to want to do is go into your menu and then go all the way down to your pencil here and then go to controls in the F menu. In the F menu, you go to custom control assignment F2 and then these are the ones I want to show you. So FN1 and FN2. So FN1 is the top one, obviously. You want to scroll down and find subject tracking. Okay, that's the one that's going to bring up the white box for you. So there we go with that. And then FN2 are your focus modes. This is going to allow you to press down on this second button right here, this FN2 button, and it's going to be able to roll through different focus modes easier. This is just how I set mine up, but I think it's the easiest way and the best way to do it with this technique. So after that, let's back out and I'll show you the technique. Okay, so basically, first I want to apologize for this right here. <laughs> this is the only picture I could find for the demonstration. It's my old boot camp picture. So, uh, but I think it works pretty well for what I'm trying to show you here. So basically, we're in dynamic area autofocus. This is what we were using most of the time. I'd say probably 80% of the time when we're not using face tracking, we're using this one. It's very reliable. It's great in low light. Dance floor, it just it works so awesome. And so I was in this a lot. Now, if as you saw before, I mapped my focus mode to the FN2 button. So if I hold the FN2 down and I roll the front button, I can get into face tracking with just two rolls forward. If I roll it back, I get there. If I roll it forward, I get to face tracking. So those are my two modes that I use most of the time. Now, the white box before, you had to be in face tracking mode, okay? And you had to press OK to bring it up. Now that's kind of a pain in the butt because then you would have to move it around to whatever you want, grab it, and then you can focus on it, okay? So the difference now is when you're in face tracking, all you have to do is, if you map it to FN1 like I showed you, you press FN1, it comes up, and then you can grab by grabbing your back button focus on whatever you want to track. This is how easy it is now, guys, to focus and recompose on something that you want to track. If something's in the frame, you just go up to it, grab it with the back button focus, and then reframe however you want your shot. Boom, grab it, boom, grab it, boom, grab it, and recompose. That's how easy it is now, guys. It's super, super easy to do this and just recompose and have something track, and it's very reliable. Look how sticky it is. It stays on whatever you're going towards, and you can do it very fast. I mean, if you're getting good at this, I mean, you're, you can just really grab something, recompose, grab something, recompose, grab something, recompose. It goes right to the ends of the frame very, very simply. And the best thing is if you want to go back to face tracking, you don't have to roll out of the focus modes or and then back in. All you have to do is just hit the FN1 button. It goes right back to face tracking. So you can go in between the 3D tracking mode and face tracking with just the FN1 button. That's it. Look how easy that is. So I just want to show you guys how good this face tracking has gotten. It's way, way more stickier. And then the addition of this to add, to grab and recompose on different things is a game changer. Now guys, I want you to also re understand that this is not going to be a simple one time. I mean, you can, some of you guys will probably get good at this quick, but you need to practice. Shooting with people in different situations, grabbing, recomposing, yes, this is very easy, but it's gonna take some time to actually learn it and get your bearings straight and get really, really good at it. But this is an unbelievable addition for, for this camera, it really is. Again, just FN1 activates it, FN1 again goes right back into face tracking. So let's, let's go back with my preliminary thoughts. I wanna say a few more things with this. All right, guys, sorry about the grid display here. Still getting used to using the Atomos. But I want to start off by showing you guys one of the most difficult things for any camera to track, which is people coming right at them or running away from them. So you can see here when she's running right at me, it stays in focus and it grabs onto it very, very well. This is just preliminary, preliminary using the 3D tracking, uh, which normally I probably wouldn't use. I'd use the 3D um, uh, dynamic, but this seems to hold up very, very well. As soon as I turn off the 3D, it goes right into face tracking and IAF, and you can see how sticky that is. Look at that. She's spinning around, and even if it jumps off for a second, is it just is looking, it knows it jumped off, and it's looking for the person that it was tracking before. This is different, guys. It's not the same as it was. It's way, way more intelligent. Before, when it slipped off, it would just kind of go crazy. Now, it knows when it slips off, and it tries to find what it was tracking before. 
you can see this. I mean, this is really just unbelievable. I can't believe how much better it is on the face. You can see Sarah's going crazy here. She's jumping around everywhere. It's tracking her eye. It's tracking her face. It's staying with her, and she's in focus the whole damn time. Look at that. I mean, they're really not playing around. They made some huge, huge, and see, when it slips off, it knows that it did, and it tries to find it again, and it comes back really, really fast. It doesn't just slam to the back focus or slam to the you know background, and then you can't get it out of it. It knows when it slipped off, and it finds it very easily. See this? Back there, boom, the eye's right in focus. Back, forward, it's in focus the whole time. Really, really nice. Yeah. The hit rate is way better. So this is reliable now. See, it slips off and then look, it finds it again. So if it does go away, it knows that it did. Now here I switched. I hit the FN1 button. So I got the box, brought it to her face. And you'll see as, as soon as, as long as I leave it, that back button focus to press, it's going to track whatever I had it on. And as soon as I let go of the back button focus, I can find something else to grab. So you'll see she's moving. On her face, I'm holding the back button focus. I grab something else. There we go. See, I can grab the background, focus on that. It'll track. Let go of the focus, grab something else, and then I can retrack. Look how easy that is. Much, much better, guys. And the hit rate is greatly, greatly improved. I mean, look at that. Coming backwards and then right towards the camera, it's still it's in focus the whole time. All right, we're back. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I am um, really impressed by the performance. It's a completely different camera in my opinion. And also I just want to say at this point now, you know, the brand wars, the back and forth between all this different, you know, type of brands and everything, it really should be over by this by this point. Every single camera brand has something to offer. It's just about going to pick up the camera, trying a few different ones in your hand, and whichever camera speaks to you is the one that you should invest in and, you know, learn like the back of your hand. No camera is perfect. No camera is going to take care of every single aspect of every single photographic job. You're always going to have to learn workarounds and you're always going to have to learn technique to get better at it. But I want you guys to understand that if you bought the Z's, it's a great investment, and they, they're working very, very well, and Nikon has improved them greatly. So we can be happy that uh, they're, they're actually committed to this development because this is a really big improvement. It really is. This is going to make shooting a lot more, a lot more uh, fun again. You know, I keep saying that with every iteration of the Z and every lens that they release and stuff. It just I get excited because it's, it's really made f shooting more fun for me. Uh, but like I said, it's not going to completely be 100% perfect in every setting. You saw that the face tracking does fall off sometimes, but the new version really, the camera knows that it did fall off and it snaps into finding it very, very quickly. That with the addition of this 3D tracking mapped to the FN1 button or the FN2, however you do it, makes the workflow just, like I said in the beginning of this camera or this video, if you're not getting the, the shots that you want, it's not the camera's fault. You need to work on your technique. You need to learn it more. So I hope this helped, guys. And like I said before, also, if you have experience with the Animal IAF stuff, drop in the comments so other people can know and it can just kind of help out the community. Any other questions, let me know. And until the next video, my friends.